So I found this doll at the thrift store for only $2, and I liked the fact that it was articulated, and that it was only $2, obviously, but also I thought that the hairline was similar to the way I draw myself in a lot of my illustrations when I'm younger, and I thought I could turn it into a cool doll version of myself when I was like 12, um, sort of based on the version of me from my upcoming graphic novel. Um, so yeah, first I started by wiping off the face, and I actually used just plain like acetone, or like the non-acetone nail polish remover, even though people usually say it's better to use acetone to wipe off doll faces. It was a little bit more difficult, but it still worked, and I didn't run the risk of like melting the body my mistake, because one time I did that with a Ken, I got some acetone on his chest and it completely bubbled up and destroyed it. So that was bad, but this worked, it just took a little bit of extra effort and a Q-tip, and then I got his whole face off. Um, I didn't want to remove the hair because the hair I'm going to do is brown anyway. Um, so I'm doing epoxy sculpt, and this is my first time actually using epoxy sculpt. I was given this for Christmas by my boyfriend, because I wanted to use epoxy sculpt for a while, but I don't know, they're kind of expensive, it's like 30 bucks I think for the two of them. Um, but yeah, I wanted to sort of alter the face so it felt more personalized like one of my actual characters. And I'm not going to show myself sculpting it because it's my first time and it was kind of hard to like have the camera in frame while I was working on it and I was being very particular. So here it is after I'm done with it. It's all sort of like a gray tone and I kind of expanded the hair forward and made the ears bigger because in my illustrations people's ears are always like really big. And I made the face rounder because it's supposed to be me when I'm younger. Um, and added a bu uh, upper lip and bigger nose because I tend to sort of exaggerate those in my illustrations. Part of this is just that I wanted to see if I could get a doll to look as close to the way I draw as possible because usually I'm stuck working with like a Barbie shaped head and they're not stylized enough for it to feel like it's mine. It just feels like I'm repainting over someone else's art I guess and I wanted to alter this one enough that it felt like it was my own and not just like a repaint of somebody else's design. Um, so I'm going to start adding in the paint color for the hair first. Um, here's it a little bit more with like different lighting. I'm actually, this is after I painted um, the skin tone and I was a little bit disappointed because the chin is more noticeable. I realized I should have sanded it but I didn't have sandpaper. I have another one of these dolls so I'm probably going to try this again. This is more um, like an experiment I guess. And here it is once I painted the hair. I painted it a sort of lighter brown at first, and I actually really like how it sort of just blended in. Like, it almost looks like that was the way the doll was supposed to be. But it's interesting actually looking at the face mold after I've painted, because I think the skin tone matches pretty well. Still a little bit disappointed at the chin. I almost wish I didn't do the chin, but um, what are you going to do? I think the shape of it looks nice, I just need to need to sand it I guess. Some people do sanding. I was afraid because I've done sanding on a doll face before and it just ended up scratching it all up. And there it is close up. You can sort of see like the brush strokes which is a thing I know a lot of doll repainters try to avoid but I don't really mind mine looking more painterly since it's based on an image that's kind of like a painting. Um, here's the comparative from the first to the third step. Um, and then I added some blush and alfalfa wanted to want it to be a part of it, but I really like adding blush to things because it makes them look more alive. Um, I feel like the blush didn't work a bit on the chin area because it didn't. I was hoping it would hide it maybe a little bit, the chin, but other than that I think it turned out okay. Um, yeah, just gotta remember to sand next time, but I feel like blush always makes them look more vibrant and alive. And I'm gonna do the painting in the eyes, but I'm not going to record it because I don't know, I'm afraid I'll mess up. So here it is with the eyes done and the eyebrows. And I think he looks cute. It looks almost like it was supposed to be this way, like it came this way, I don't know. But it was a fun experiment for the first time and I'm probably going to try it again. So this is more like attempt number one. And next time I see one of these dolls thrifting, I will probably pick him up. Um, I actually saw him recently, this particular doll in a doll two pack on clearance for $10 at Target. So maybe I should get one of those. So here he is fully dressed. Um, I'm actually going to make clothes for the final version. These ones are just temporary. The shirt is from um, 
like a mid 2000s Ken fashionista. The shoes are from a Jasper Twilight doll and the pants are from the Skipper Babysitter's Inc. boy. Um, just in case you wanted to know what, what fits on him. But it's very similar to the way I draw myself, so at least that's a good thing. And I gave him the side eyes, which is one of my favorite things. Um, I think if I do the second one, I might make him frown a little bit more, because I think in the book that I'm working on, I make myself as a kid, like, frown a lot more than I do when, or that I did when I sculpted him. But I mean, the doll has a smile, so it's sort of easier to work with. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, like and subscribe or whatever YouTubers do. Bye!